that GC uh, work. Electrical cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and everyone saw a little bit of UV vis. Yeah. No. Uh, CV, like the orbit, or CV, DPVs. Um, I'm going to do a spectral electrical imagery, which is take connected to UV vis and the electrical cam setup, and you're watching the UV as you change potentials. Ah. Um. I done a, I, I did a, a titration electrochem which gives you a forte which shows you the other one's line because it ends with showing you that your electron transfers work. We're not sending weather to anyone. <laughs> we just practice uh, security. But yeah, no, that's I, I do a lot of electrochem stuff, so when we get to that next uh, do you see the gaps? Yeah. And you probably can speed it up by having two secret keys or even three. So it's still not quite secure because people who sit on the same row can easily identify it. But if you swap between rows, there is a little intrigue. Remember off the top of my head. GC is nothing too special. Same as before. It's you're just taking out. Oh. <laughs> you're just taking out some, some type of slash substrate. You don't know who it is. Uh, it's be same and same so and it's basically just all of the Oh right. Yeah. I have records of the symbols from the. Last time, but yeah, I, if I, I declare it also a lot of my research, we use that to determine uh, product yields no. of our mm -hmm. uh, of our oxidation reactions. <laughs> oh, I I, I've done a GCM essay a couple times. I can't believe it. MS. She's not all right. Did you? Yeah. So it goes to the JC, and you can determine what it comes out and it goes into that answer. I don't know. And then you select all the JCs that are not that nice. Bring them in. So then you're able to determine. I have a fan. It will collect and then redistribute in the like a piece of circle. Yeah, with a circle. Does that mean? They didn't mention. Uh, oh. Not done high res, but I have not high res. I don't know. I was trying to convince myself. Well, I guess we're watching. Yeah. 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 That's good. I remember how that. <laughs> <laughs> My lab bought a copy flasher. It's an automated. Are you able to get into the No, you need a cross current. Because I asked for a roll, but it was a lot of the Oh, what are we doing? I can't work that Okay, so you said they've done. Okay, and cool. Yeah, no, he's talking to Carly, so I didn't have to start. That's not. Yeah, Carl thought that was a seven hundred number. Did she get to take that? You know, like undergrad kid and do six hundred. Without a major reason, it would be hard. But like as a subject of groups, or like, and that's where I ended up. Like, you can do it like a subject yeah. Well, because I there aren't any physics classes getting offered. That's why I haven't personally taken. So is Orb retired? Is he? 
I don't know. Well, there's like no optics, lasers, photonics, like none of this stuff getting offered. But I don't know. Which would suck because I still have not taken the class from me. Yeah. Oh, but the mathematical math and physics overlap in the class. Yeah. And it's randomly on Thursday. No other labs have ever been on Tuesday. Monday or Wednesday or Friday or two of those. There is a little chance that they will distribute. Yeah, and so there's no way. Work immediately to the other end. That's it. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I get a substitution. Yeah, she's the actor that I was going to come into your room. Yeah, okay. I know what the person is in there, so maybe it's nice. Maybe I can come in and get some time in there. I don't know. It's not one of those special ones. Everyone wants to get in. Better than mine was the last one. I just kind of like a little bit. I didn't want to like, 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 like real art. That's how you get to it. That's the whole side of the two graphs together. It's really a lot of what you want And I am feeling super confident. Actually, kind of it is answer your question. <laughs> Which one was the hardest? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So I think they're all the Oh, yeah. <laughs> the real question. Uh, yeah. He's like, why did I come here? I, 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 go, I, I, go, I went by columns. Yeah, that's what I did too. Oh, okay. That's not true. You did a map? Did you do a map call? No, he's got the same thing that we do. <laughs> yeah. Does it get up to how It's not like a straight. Yeah. Yeah. He's like yeah. eight, eight, ten, ten. Yes. Okay. So from like position to The goal is to reach hundred points. Every single about hundred points makes like, you yeah. say yeah. even more consonants. There's also two Still. different consonants. Right. Yeah. So it's not like portion. So number one, which was extremely hard for some of you, as just declared. Uh, so you just split it on, on factors, on uh, po po polynomials, find roots of polynomials, and then uh, each root of a polynomial is zero, and two another special points are infinity, which are coming with the sombrero. And then at, you have three points that you multiply and you just count the signs. So the factor of this thing x can go out of brackets and then the rest can be uh, solved as square equation which you give parabola this viscous down right? this minus plus and minus signs and then uh, there is a linear function and Gaussian which is uh, always and then you count plus, plus, minus, which you give minus sign. Use uh, zero points and connect them by a straight line. I don't, probably everyone gets 10. Just draw one point if there is some, something is missing in, in drawing or sign is opposite. But um, if there are three zeros, it's worth of nine for sure. Next. Um, if you have nothing to do and you spend all your time just reading math literature, you can find Rodriguez's uh, formula that replaces. Here we simplify the constants. The only thing is that 
it is Gaussian, regular Gaussian with minus exponential, and here it is this plus. They are designed in such way that you multiply, by multiplying these two functions by itself, you get one. And if you plug in the derivative of order n, this function will generate polynomials of higher and higher order, right? So if you apply poly uh, this uh, derivative zero's order, the polynomial will be zero's order, one. If you make the first, you'll get uh, linear. If you apply it twice, you get the uh, quadratic function, and then you, you continue to the third one. And uh, what did we assign 25? Mm -hmm. So the answers for this f0, f1, f2, f3 should be polynomials of increasing orders. Uh, coefficient signs uh, forgive it to each other. It's so easy to make mistakes. Uh, I, mean, I guess I'm just confused. It looks yes. like you didn't add the ex squared over 2 after you took the derivative. Just, just a second. I'll bring it to the larger so that we have specific discussion. OK, please repeat. So you took the derivative to the nth power of, let's just go easy, and of like the first or zero when n equals zero, right? Yes. Okay, and you got one. Uh huh. Okay, I agree that's the derivative, but then wouldn't e x squared to over two still exist because you didn't take the derivative of that? So here, not you can go one up even. What I'm saying is that you're only taking the derivative of e negative x squared over 2, right? But if the derivative of zero's order, mm -hmm. derivative of zero's order is no derivative. I agree. So then you didn't take the derivative at all of e x squared over 2, right? Correct. So then wouldn't the answer be e x squared over 2? No. There is a product. Um, so derivative of uh, zero's order is 1. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, unitary function. Changes nothing. So you have product of e to <coughs> this power and e to the negative of this power. And they will compensate each other. Okay. Make sense? I guess. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. And uh, the reason for this equation, we, we will never use it later. It, it's only to uh, get a mindset that there are se several bypasses. The traditional way that I keep in secret from you, well, you can read uh, Wikipedia and, and textbooks, uh, the expansion of eigenstates of, uh, in as a series, as power as uh, polynomials, is very painful and not pleasant. But there are several bypasses. One is with creation and inhibition operators that we already committed, and another one is Rodriguez uh, formula. If uh, one plugs in right constants here, Operation like this, you generate all eigenstates of harmonic oscillator. It's just a math trick. <clears throat> so, here, number three, words of 25. Here, again, we make our life a little simpler by avoiding the constants, which make our life painful, but could be a little alpha here if you would like to be rigorous. And please give me signs if I'm too slow, if you are, if you went much further in grading. Give me like secret signs. If no, I will keep at my place. And then these two operations are very similar in nature to what we did with creation and annihilation operators, right? So linear combination of position and uh, momentum with different signs. And if <coughs> you use minus sign in this linear combination, then they're uh, popping up terms of second power that add together, and you get the polynomial of second power. 
as a uh, modified by Gaussian. And this is an analog of applying creation operator to first excited state. You can recognize similarities. So the power of polynomial escalates, goes up. If you put plus sign here, then the second powers pop up with different signs, cancel, and you go down to polynomial of lower order. <laughs> so this corresponds to annihilation from first excited to ground state. Here it was. To number two. Just give liberal credits. The number four. <coughs> Inspect combination of such products. Uh, of a product of uh, two operators. One is one, and first and second are linear combinations of position and momentum. So if you do this exercise, you see it's uh, simple. You just open brackets. Recall that uh, operators cannot be swapped randomly, and two middle terms will uh, correspond to commutation and give a constant, right? And uh, first and last term gives position squared and uh, momentum squared. Something is not perfect with constants. We do not put, put mass, frequency, uh, sign is wrong, but in functional form, first term is like potential energy, like, uh, potential uh, harmonic potential. Second term is like kinetic energy, second derivative over position. And the third term is just a constant. So if you see something similar to this, give full credit. Or even if you do not see, but see some uh, attempt to analyze and give conclusions, also try to ramp with the credit. And the conclusions are that if you, if you take linear combinations of position and moment with different signs and make them product, which will be very soon a product of creation and annihilation operators, they will generate Hamiltonian of harmonic oscillator plus some constant. So product of creation times annihilation gives Hamiltonian. Yes? I guess I'm confused. You know, it's like kind of like the Hamiltonian, but it's differing by a non, or like two different factors of the function. Yeah, it's so, not like directly proportional. It's like the position dependence is proportional to one thing and the momentum dependence is proportional to another thing. If you play with constants in this linear combinations, uh, you will get the right thing. So it, um, if, if you would work out the constants, if you make your homework, longer, my preparation longer, and your grading session longer. We just get the main idea. What? 25, right? 30. 30, yes. So it is more mathematically not more complicated, but uh, it's more philosophically important. OK. What else? <clears throat> um, for the question about examples of harmonic oscillators, okay, let me examine myself and try to design something. So, Just want to insert an empty page. 
some lumber. Right? So let me earn my crit. Um, five gray team atoms and molecules. Vibrations of uh, solvent. Around polar molecule, too. Well, I, I can bet someone was putting ball and spring. Um, it's a little silly for this course, but plasmons. Induction capacity contour in uh, radio transmitter. Electric field in uh, lasers. Am I missing something? Other, uh, did you got in your own work or in the works that you're grading something? Uh, in addition to this, your favorite one is cell phones. Huh? Cell phones. Uh, it's. Uh... Oh, that's the. Uh... Okay, sorry. Okay. <coughs> uh... No? I didn't insert it. No, I did it here. And for extra credit, number six with uh, 40 points, V integrals 0 to and four are coming as uh, multiples of uh, square root of pi. So square root of three, square root of pi minus two square root of pi plus one square root of pi, which uh, adds to, to two. And uh, if you were working out it uh, thoroughly, uh, you may have tried to practice integration by parts. And I already know how the developments were going. And the best part, at least uh, when, when I was doing it for integral two, so this xi squared times Gaussian times d psi. And there is also factor xi squared over two. But in this integral, one can submerge this thing <coughs> under the sign of integral. Because if you integrate this um, linear times Gaussian as standalone integral, you can take it. Because psi times dx is psi squared, and then, then it is, uh, can be taken analytically in the indefinite uh, limits. So if you if you do it, then you have integral psi d of psi squared squared minus psi squared. And now I'm playing lazy and skipping the factors. There will be like minus uh, um, one over two. And then this var variable can be called u, and this v. And then you uh, play integration by parts. So right answer full credit, right choice of uh, parts for integration by parts, very liberal 
How did you use integration by parts? Hmm? How did you use integration by parts? Because you can't do that with like x squared times e to something x squared. Or like size squared or whatever. Uh, Angela, can you please move uh, the window to the lower? You can take this integral, right? Yes. And if you know, know this integral, which will be like say squared times Gaussian. But that only happens if you have like x e to the wait, negative. Wait, exponent. wait, wait. Yeah. We, are, we are thinking in nonlinear way. OK. Now, if you take derivative, derivative of, of such thing, you will come back to this expression. <clears throat> so instead of v variable, you can you can use this stuff, and then you practice u e minus v d. No, nope. um, I'm very curious to see your solution. Uh, I did like a parametric integration thing. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I'm also confused as to how you got like m and omega and all that in there because that wasn't ever like in the function that we had. It is in definition of alpha. Therefore, the credit is, is big oh, because okay. it, it is uh, heavy mathematical. Yeah, I just uh, e Even if uh, someone was fearless enough to start it and do not progress not much, give some credit to upload for, for the effort. OK, uh, let me please try to add together as a little help and then we will have maybe 15 minutes for the actual lecture. If anyone needs... Even if you do not like each other, do not put negative grades. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what are our goals and where do we progress? I, I pull the same error again and again. That's one. Do not repeat this error after me. By applying ratio operator to uh, a given eigenstate of harmonic oscillator, you get larger one from what one. Okay. The date we have up there, uh -huh. we have that day off. Okay, excellent, excellent. Bring, bring it on Wednesday then. Okay. Um, it is against my uh, principles. I want to, uh, everyone to have at least a week for completion of homework, but if we leave more time, then uh, homeworks will be very behind of class material. And we will not get benefit, any, any benefit for education. Okay. And uh, you, you'll get some credits anyway, as you probably have. So, um, we will cover most of this thing on Monday, and this problem was covered last time, right? So, uh, if you know that annihilation is a conju Hermitian conjugate of creation, you just take the matrix that we developed. No, I'm not sure, showing it here. Oh, okay, it is here. You just take this matrix, flip, flip it over, and then your first question will be done. And then you just verbally describe what you see there. So, for 
three uh, remaining things. We will use discrete representation, not as matrix, but more as uh, algebraic form of these operators, and try to construct all needed operators, all standard operators that we need in quantum theory based on creation and annihilation. Right? You know that creation is a linear combination of position and momentum. Same annihilation. But if you write them on the top of each other, you can solve and uh, for inverse problem, you can express position as a linear combination of creation and annihilation, and same for momentum. And then, based on, on this writing, you can escalate and do all operators. Why should we torture uh, ourselves? It makes all operations much more symmetric and quick. It, it is this algebraic form specifically for harmonic oscillator is much simpler and quicker than uh, differential operators. So it, it is designed not to make life harder, but to make life easier. Well, the easiest is to do nothing. I, I realize it. So, um, where, should we, where should we go? If our cre... No. If I write it, if you'll be born, I should declare what it was. Predict future. Make an analogy of if it is um, diatomic motion, oscillator means something has to oscillate. You can see quantum features of quantum oscillators in Raman spectra if you do them in your uh, research companion of, of your studies. But first thing that oscillator does, even quantum oscillator, it oscillates. So we need to see a quantum analog of classical oscillations. And simplest classical oscillations is when we remove something from equilibrium and release, and it starts going forth and back. Right? It is what Austin did show uh, one Friday before. So we will try to do this uh, modeling in a couple of ways. And first way will be standard, traditional eigenstate expansion with help of, uh, of this fancy operator that, that we did. So it is the goal. And everything we do is a preparation steps. If I declare just answer or just call Austin to repeat his um, presentation, we can get some scientific insights, but we cannot project our minds towards different regimes of uh, oscillations and initial conditions. If we do some analytical de derivations, if they are possible, it means we immediately have all answers, not just one sample initial condition, but we have answers for any conditions, and we can predict how it will behave. So there are some benefits which uh, should justify effort and hard work, hopefully. So, what is it? Square root n plus one. So it picks number n and releases number n plus one, right? So what it picks, what it gives. And this uh, selfish corrupted postman takes a hit. If you do annihilation, we do not write minus. It picks a different number m and releases m minus one, which will work any time except uh, the ground state when it will make zero. Now. What if we try to repeat the same exercise that I hope you successfully completed in the homework? I will be very curious to, to look at it myself. So if you multiply creation times annihilation, we add a constant 
you saw that there should be constant put H bar omega, call it Hamiltonian, and just look what, what will happen. So we are looking for Hamiltonian uh, in discrete form, in the basis of eigenstates. Do you know the answer? from your scientific intuition. No punishment, no requirements, but I will be not surprised if some of you you, you have an answer immediately. Do not, do not uh, think of exact equations or numbers, just functional form. How that matrix of Hamiltonian in basis of eigenstates should look like. Any, uh, yes. I don't know, it's going to be in that same kind of like row form where it's... So, um, it is what's called. It is a follow-up from uh, the idea. If you do have eigenstates, those are eigenstates of Hamiltonian. Which means, if you act by Hamiltonian on one of the states from this set, you get this state back. Right? And this can be achieved only by di uh, diagonal methods. Where diagonal elements will be uh, energy values. So right now we will do this exercise. We already know that matrices for creation and annihilation are off diagonal. They have sub sub diagonal thing. But if you multiply them together, it is expected that we will get a diagonal matrix. So it is what we are going to, to do. And we didn't put much of our attention yet to eigenvalues. But you may know it from your previous life and scientific intuition that energies of a harmonic oscillator are equidistantly spaced. If you go to next and next and next, it just get more and more h bar omega. And if one starts with one half of h bar omega, this will be like one half, three halves, five halves of h bar omega, and the rest will be zeros. So it will be a little effort to get this matrix from, how to say, first principles. And again, why are we doing it? Because later we are going to see how displaced oscillator oscillates, whether it will do the same things as classical oscillator does, or if you deviate from it. And if deviate, then how? For example, if you remember <coughs> what Austin declared last time, he told that uncertainty of position for oscillator will increase, and the uncertainty of momentum will not. We are going to check uh, this uh, hypothesis. So all of these efforts are going this, this uh, way. So just plugging in fluidation and annihilation, right? What do we see for the remaining generous nine minutes? So this one, xm generates m minus one constants. Summations can be pulled all up front. And then, what is the structure of this equation? So we have bra, cap, bra, cap. Why many People love quantum mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, why many people who want to do this theory select quantum mechanics as, as something much more preferred compared to other theories? 
Well, you, you, you'll continue laughing, but it is one of the simplest theories in the world. One that we've appreciated due to extended background in math. So anything we do in quantum mechanics is linear. So you never see square of the wave function entering the equation. It enters to some observables, but if you solve equations, either time dependent, time independent, it is not there. If you have products of operators, no matter how many of operators you multiply, you get only one linear operator after. Because see, we have a combination. It is an operator, another operator. Bra, cat, bra, cat. But as soon as in the product, bra meets cat, they convert into delta function or disappear completely, and we will have only last bra and first cat. And the rest will pop up in constants. So even with longer chain of stuff like this, at the end, each operator can be written in the form of some uh, operator and then with this uh, cat and bra. <coughs> this is the reason why quantum theory is so simple. Well, much simpler than uh, many other areas of human knowledge. So how do we practice this simplicity here? So when cat meets bra, they form Kronecker what? Delta. Yes. <laughs> so this when this Q1 meets, they will be non-zero only if m equals m minus one. Right? So you, you recognize it is the, the same writing. I was not careful enough to pull all summations up front, but it doesn't matter. So now we do have this snakes and this mice that they will consume. So uh, we may want to carefully process this removal of, of delta function. So everywhere where we have m minus one, we should write m. After removing uh, one snake and one mice. Everywhere where we had m, we should write n plus how many? One. Yes. That's it? Let's, let's try. So instead of n, we write n plus one. Instead of n plus one, I will write n plus one. Instead of m, I will write square root of n plus 1. Right? Instead of n plus 1, I will keep writing n plus 1 because I like calligraphy. <laughs> well, it's very poor calligraphy. Summation over m. Or we can make a summation over n plus 1. This bar omega. Brackets plus one half. Are we happy? Okay, am I happy? No, because it is too long to, to write, even if we love calligraphy. First, we can remove square root and put just n plus one without square root. And second, why should I write n plus one? Let me replace it to letter k. And nothing should be affected. So h bar omega summation k 
k times k k. If someone listens and doesn't watch it, it, it just sounds <laughs> strange. K k k k k. We are done. Do you see a diagonal matrix? So it means um, at row number k and column number k, there will be element k, and the rest are zeros. Well, not k, but k plus one half, because we put it. And we start uh, from zero, so one half, k equals one plus one half, k equals two plus one half, k equals three plus one half. And it is two big zeros for the rest. Zero, one, two, Three. So rows and columns, zero, one, two, three, and so forth. H bar one again. This stuff is just labels. So we do have matrix form of homotopy operator. And does it match our expectation about diagonal form? Matches X patients diagonal form. We do not have time for the next step to do it mathematically, but I'm going to announce so that uh, next time we will have uh, a little seeds in our brains. Tricks, tricks, and bypasses. So, in order to consider oscillating oscillator, we will solve a completely different problem that will give an immediate answer to this. And the problem will be um, okay, I type it somewhere here. So, we will consider that the displaced state of the oscillator. It should be Gaussian, but it will be not an eigenstate. There, there is no eigenstate of harmonic oscillator that is displaced Gaussian, displaced from equilibrium. So it will be a linear combination of all eigenstates. Linear combination with some unknown coefficients. Since it is not an eigenstate, these coefficients will change in time. And this change in time will accumulate as oscillations if they are there. And by things that I want to skip right now and declare later, if we find an eigenstate of annihilation operator in such form, we will find the answer for this oscillating oscillator. So next time when we meet, we will find eigenvalues of annihilation operator. Thank you for investing your time. Looking forward to see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. Yes. Uh, back on the other side, we had like h equals h bar omega than your diagram. Mm -hmm. um, is that h or just are those the eigen energies? Oh, yeah. That's the one. Like, is that the operator h? Or it is operator h in the basis oh, yeah. of eigenspace. It's like saying it's a muscle. Oh, the metric form. I mean, yeah, it's an operator. Oh, yeah, so it's a lot of like operators. Uh, yeah. uh, he's, he's a pretty nice guy. I think he's going to go that. That's like your second. Uh, not really. Uh, it's well, this one. It's well, this one? Yeah. I guess. So, uh, we may erase it still. This? Yeah, it's not like a vector. Yeah. No, yeah, I understand that. But I mean, does it operate on ideal states? Right now, it is an operator that. I completely understand your question and I'm happy to answer. Okay. It may take a second to probably. Okay. The operator is expressed 
in basis of eigenstates. It can act not only on eigenstate, but on arbitrary wave function. But this arbitrary wave function must be expressed also in the basis of eigenstates as expansion over eigenstates. So psi arbitrary wave function. I guess it would have to be, but you could express it in terms of summation so. of C such as your life easier. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Okay. So I guess I'm confused if I operate on a state with that uh, matrix, uh, it's is it an operator that changes the state at all? Yes. Yes. Or not not yeah. maybe not changes, that's a bad word. <laughs> um, so but. if your state where you uh, if you apply this Hamiltonian to arbitrary state, then you can discuss it a little later. But if you apply it to eigenstate, when this uh, C coefficients will be like 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, so only one of, of these coefficients will be not 0. Yeah. Then, uh, by applying Hamiltonian to such state, you will get the state itself multiplied by a bar omega and yeah. then uh, yeah. so whatever k plus one half times, times psi. Okay, so I shouldn't be thinking about the states as Gaussian functions? No, no, you need to think of states as uh, expansion in uh, <laughs> expansion in the <coughs> basis of vector states. Okay, that was my issue. Vectors, vectors. Sorry. So the I, I need to, to do a better job and declare it. So we are trying to escape Cartesian space mm -hmm. and do everything in vectors, in discrete space. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. We, we are not avoiding Cartesian space in the labs. And that, therefore, they are so simple and intuitive. <laughs> but uh, in, if you want to do theoretical description of anything, 99.9999% you go into discrete basis and uh, mm -hmm. work with vectors rather than yeah, yeah. functions. Yeah, that makes sense. I just didn't make that jump. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, as a non-chemistry major, huh? is there a particular class that you think that I have to take that would basically, I guess, what's the benefit? Yeah, open, that open unleash your imagination. Yeah, well, because I'm the route that I'm going. It seems like I'm probably going to be working with materials. Um, well, I can be selfish and invite my course next semester. If if you think that it would help me, like, in the synthesis of materials, that would probably be it a good It will thing. help you in computational characterization of materials and computer-guided design of materials. So, like, if I wanted to, say, like, make a material with, like, such and such properties, that would be a good way to basically figure out how to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I might do that, then. It would be, like, theoretical synthesis that you could apply to actual synthesis. Right. Well, because then if I'm going to be doing industrial engineering, too, then I can...